Hi, and welcome to our webinar on Production Assist in Vectorworks. I am Moritz Staffel, the CEO of Deersoft. We are a company that is specialized in software development for the entertainment industry. Our customers include Vectorworks itself, MI Lightning, and Roby. One of our products that you may know is Vectorworks Braceworks. In the last three years, we have developed our new product, Production Assist. Production Assist is a cloud based documentation and paperwork tool. We delivered a tool where all information that you need to assemble an event can be stored in one place in the cloud. So what we offer to you is the online platform Production Assist, the Production Assist Vectorworks plugin, and the multi-platform desktop app Production Assist for iOS, Mac, Windows, Linux, and Android. In this webinar, we will focus on the Vectorworks plugin and how it integrates with the workflow. As the first thing, we will start installing the solution on your system. The first step is to register on productionsys.com to get a user account. You need this to log into the application. In order to use Production Assist in Vectorworks, also the app needs to be installed as this brings the needed file onto the system. So download and install the Production Assist app from our webpage. Then start it and log in into it. We offer a convenient way of installing Production Assist in Vectorworks using the menu command install Vectorworks plugin. This lets you choose the Vectorworks version and where you want to install it. Just select the Vectorworks executable and it will install the needed files directly in Vectorworks automatically. When you're on Windows, you may need to run Production Assist as an administrator to get it working. Once you install it, just start Vectorworks. I've prepared this already in here with one Vectorworks and um, we'll continue now. When you open a new document, Production Assist will ask you if it should be activated for the drawing. You can change this behavior in the settings of Production Assist. There are three modes available. Don't use Production Assist unless you activate it by hand. Ask when opening a drawing, this is the default setting, and always use Production Assist. For this demo, we will use for sure use Production Assist. The way how you control Production Assist is with a so-called web palette. No worries, the name is misleading. You don't need to be connected to the internet to use it. You can open it with the menu command, window, palettes, web palettes, and Production Assist. The UI of Production Assist looks the same on all platforms. In one moment, I will explain more about it. But right now, we just start with drawing in Vectorworks. Production Assist just works with the normal object that you use in Vectorworks. Trusses, lightning devices, hoists, and television, and so on. Almost every object is supported. So let's start. For this example, we will draw a truss line, for example, with Euro truss, and place some fixtures on it. In addition to this, we will add some hoists so that we can do a structural calculation on it. The nice thing about Production Assist is that all the things are happening in real time. So the time that we currently have drawn this, it automatically have been calculated on a structural way, for example. So if I'm selecting the hoists, and enabling their label, you see that you already have the results in there. When you now start moving fixtures around, you immediately see that the load on the hoist is automatically updating so that you can see how much the system is changing when you move the loads around. That is pretty nice and gives you a pretty fast way 
of working in vector works with structural calculation. But now let's look on the production assist side of this. Let's open the web palette again and have a look. On the top, you find the menu bar. The menu bar is the way how to run menu commands that are specific to production assist. Um, it has all the menu commands that you can use with production assist. In the middle left, we have the scene tree. The scene tree, uh, You see the object that I have placed in Vectorworks already have appeared in here. You also see that they are grouped. This happens automatically. The grouping, also called kinematic chain, help you organize your drawing. The selection in Vectorworks is synchronized with production assist. So if you select one object in Vectorworks, it also gets selected in production assist and the other way around. Have in mind that you can't select an object that is not on an active layer or class when you have disabled select and modify. On the left of the web palette, you see the production assist object properties. It is similar um, like the Vectorworks object property, but you can show properties for mixed object selection. So when you select a lightning device and a truss in Vectorworks, Vectorworks will not show you any properties of this, but production assist will show you the combined information. The production assist object properties can be used to change the properties in Vectorworks and properties that only exist in production assist, like the supplier of an object. In the middle of the screen, there is a table view. The table view is a nice feature that shows the properties of your object in a table way like Excel. You can select the properties that you want to display. Like object ID, purpose, assembly group, or the set high. And you can filter which object should be displayed in this table. So for example, if I only want to show fixture object, I can only enable the filter fixtures and it will only show me fixture objects in here. You also can select some presets that um, uh, we, we ship with production assist, like hoist tables, fixture DMX sheet or distributor power patch. You also can create your own preset and they will be synced with the cloud. Um, this is how we generate our paperwork. We will learn in a few minutes um, about it. Just let us wrap the UI. On the right, there is the so-called navigation palette. The navigation palette contains the view on the layers, the classes, the worksheet, and the load combinations that are used to calculate the structure in here. But now I want to go into details on how we generate the distributor power patch. First thing that I will do for this is that I will duplicate the truss structure so that I have more objects to work on. I just duplicate them by moving them around and you see that they will also automatically appear in production assist. Now we insert plug boxes to patch object on this. For this, we switch to plan view in production assist, which is the button to the top. This will show you the 3D scene in production assist as well. We are using the new object tool and searching for plug boxes in the content that we're shipping with this. When I'm selecting the plug box, I'm able to insert my plug box directly on the truss where I want it to be. So on the first truss line, I place it in the center. And on the second truss line, I place it also near the center in here. Now we go to the table view again and select the preset fixture power patch. The first thing that I want to do is I want to number my fixtures. So I'm selecting the first six of it. So all of them are on the first truss line and type in 100. It will automatically increase the fixture ID by one and starting at 100. All the other ones on the next assembly group will get the fixture ID starting at 200. All changes that I'm doing in the table also propagate to Vectorworks again. So when I'm now selecting the fixture, I see the channel is filled. 
If I now type in this later, the changes will also be done in production assist itself. The easiest way to patch this now is to use the auto patch tool. Just select the object that you want to patch and run the command control P. Well, first let me number this. When I number this, I can select the plug boxes, type in A, and all the plug boxes always get a name like A, and then it will increase it to B, um, so that I'm seeing on which plug box I am. Now I'm selecting the fixtures that I want to power patch and use the command, command P for power patch. It writes the connected distributor into the table and updates it automatically also in Vectorworks. So if I'm now looking into the Vectorworks drawing, it tells me that the circuit name is A and the plug box circuit number is six for this. I also can go in here and type directly the plug box port that I wanted to connect just by typing in B will allow me to connect it to the first free port on the plug box B. If I'm going to the next fixtures and type in B3, it will auto connect it to the B3 output of the plug box. I also can use again, the multi-patch tool in order to use the command P to patch this in here. Right now, we only have the plug boxes, but we want to get the full pictures. So we insert a distributor and a power source into the drawing. Again, we will open the plan tool for this. Search for a distributor that has 32, 32 amps output. We're choosing this, which has 216 outputs. Insert in the drawing. And again, search for a power source that we want. So a generator. I number, I number these two generators with the object ID D1. It automatically increases me the number in here. So one way of patching them is now to select the generator and open the electric and data properties from the object info palette in production assist. I can select the output and patch it directly to D1 output C2. You see that the icons change when an object is fully connected. Now again, I'm clicking on the distributor and patch this directly onto here. You see directly the consumption and the phase usage of the outputs are updated when you're connecting this. I'm connecting both of the two things in here so that I have everything calculated. I change back to the worksheet and now generate a channel patch list for the distributor so that we see on which fuse, which fixture is patched. For this, we right click onto the actual distributor and create an assembly sheet for it. The assembly sheet is, is a way to display the connections of an object per fuse. So for this, I have the, 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 the worksheet and search in here for channel and activate all the different things that I want to see. Double clicking on one cell entry in here will size it so that I'm seeing all the connections. I can sort, for example, with the channel name so that I see on which fuse, which fixer is patched and which channel is used by it. I now can export this to a PDF and print it. I just use the export PDF button in here and scale it so that everything is fixing on this thing. So I put in 50, for example. I give a left margin and a right margin so that it's displayed nice on the PDF and just printing, okay. You see that I have now my power patch table also as PDF on my system. Okay, now I have the documentation I need for the fixtures, how they are patched electrically. Now let's generate a table for the hoist. For this, we go back to scene and use the presets for the hoist load overview. 
This shows you all the hoists inside the drawing in here, and you can move to the right so that you're seeing the hook and roof force. Again, if you start moving trusses and uh, fixtures and hoists around, you see that automatically the values updating in the Vectorworks drawing and in addition in the Excel tables. So that is a pretty good feature in order to get results really fast. As last thing, we will upload the project to the cloud so that other people also can see the paperwork. For this, we use the command product genesis cloud commit to project. When you upload it for the first time, you need to create a project first. Choose any name that suits you. Have only in mind that the project name will be used as URL for the project. After this, it shows you all the changes that you are making. As this is the first commit, you just see that everything has been created. So now press us OK as last step and we'll upload it to the cloud. When you now open the browser, you will find your project in the exact same state like it was before in Vectorworks. You see that the UI looks familiar. It is the same UI that you have been seeing in Vectorworks, but running in a browser. You don't need to install any software for this. You also can change this and edit in there. You can do this directly in the browser, or if you wish, for example, on an iPad. To do this in the browser, just click the edit mode. Right now, I will just change the object ID from the fixtures on the first truss. Also commit these changes with the commit to project command. Now it shows you only the changes. Sorry for this. Now it shows you only the changes that you have been doing in here. So you see you have changed the fixture ID and the object ID. Just press OK to send the changes to the cloud. In order to get the changes back into Vectorworks, you need to run the menu command update from current branch. This will also compare the state on the server with the state that is currently on Vectorworks in here. When you're pressing OK, it will bring in the changes that you have just made in Vectorworks. In one of the following webinars, we'll go into more details about the on -workflow, online workflow. But this gives you a first impression on how to use them. So Production Assist is a powerful tool that enhances the workflow in Vectorworks dramatically. It helps you organize your Vectorworks drawing with the scene tree and assembly groups. With the table view from Production Assist, you have control about the properties of your object. Selecting and changing field is now as easy as possible. Real-time calculation helps you design your structure. Directly see what is happening when you make changes. Calculating both the ultimate failure and the usability at the same time avoids nasty surprises and makes sure that you always are on the safe side. So thank you for attending the webinar. For details on specific things like power calculations, structural reports, and label printing, just follow the other webinars. Also, a good way to get more in detail is to arrange a free private demo. Just use the demo button on the Production Assist website. If you have any question, just feel free to raise your hand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we will send the recording of this for sure a little bit later in here. Bye bye.